CNBC TV 18. Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis, deep dive into financials, and also tell you about the key risk and triggers going forward. Well, let's not waste any time and get straight to the first stock that we have for you. My colleague Sonal gets us this very special deep dive on SKF India. a multinational company that started its operations in India back in 1923. That's a hundred years and a long time. If we track the last 10 years' performance, the stock is up 700%. It is a well-known bearings manufacturer and manufactures variety of bearings, be it automotive bearings, industrial bearings, there's mounted bearings and housing. There are seals as well, industrial seals, automotive seals. They also do test and measuring equipment and vehicle aftermarket as well and caters to a variety of segments. In the automotive segment, it is the two-wheelers, commercial vehicles. In the industrial segment, it's marine, aerospace. They also cater to agriculture, there's textiles. They also uh, cater to sectors like pulp and paper. There is something like a wind energy, oil and gas railways as well. This is something that they do uh, around six manufacturing facilities with 450 plus distributors. In terms of financials, the company has done well in nine months. Revenues at the nine-month mark are 3,210 crore rupees. EBITDA at the nine-month mark is almost equal to FY22 EBITDA. And profits at the nine-month FY23 mark is actually better than the profits that they saw in FY22. In terms of the split, most of their uh, revenues coming from the industrial segment at 49%. The automotive segment is 42% and exports is a small amount at 8% for the company. It is a debt-free company and has been regularly giving dividends to the investors as well between 18 to 20 percent barring FY20 where the dividend payout was really high. Now what are the triggers for the company? How are they planning to grow the share that they've already seen? And what could the possible risk be? Let's go and speak to the management of the company. And as promised, we are inside the Pune plant of SKF India. The company is completing 100 years. So a lot to talk about and we'll get you a deep dive into the company's businesses as well. We have with us Mr. Manish Bhatnagar, who is the managing director of the company. Mr. Bhatnagar, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. We can't wait to take a deep dive and the plant is looking fabulous as well. Um, and congratulations on 100 years as well. So before I ask you and talk to you about next, not 100 years maybe, but the next plans for the company, uh, just an industry perspective. I wanted to understand how big is India's bearings market? Um, are we completely self-sufficient? Do we have to import? And what is SKF's market share here? So we are about 20 odd percent market share. We are about uh, 4,000 odd crores. So you can calculate the market size. Um, the interesting thing about bearings is that one in four bearings in India is a counterfeit bearing. So the market actually oh. is so much more than that. And the really interesting thing is that customers do not know they're buying a counterfeit bearing. Oh. They're really buying the, what they think is a real bearing. So part of our job is to educate customers and make sure customers get genuine bearings. Mm -hmm. And because bearings can become a really important component in the machinery. Right. People don't want to buy counterfeits. But to your point, uh, so yeah, we got to manage those imports a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, so I will get into that as well in the later part of this conversation. You have two major segments, so to say, automobiles and industrials. Which is a better or more growing market for you? Uh, what are the demand drivers in these two segments? When do you say, we? do you have a cycle here? Or is it a steady demand that you see? So, in terms of just uh, diversification of the segments, industrial, of course, is much more diversified. There are so many segments in industrial, textiles, machinery, railways, energy, etc., etc. Automotive is a little bit less diversified. It's only four-wheelers and commercial and two-wheelers, etc. And that's much more dependent on economic cycles. If the price of a car goes up by 5%, 
consumption drops significantly. And it's tough to make that up in other segments. In industrial, it's a little bit easier. So uh, both are high growth segments, especially in a country like India. Yeah. But industrial is uh, more diversified and therefore less cyclical than automotive would be. Okay, interesting. So you spoke about uh, how these two segments differ. Can you tell us what is demand looking like right now in India generally, especially after we have come back from this post-COVID recovery and exports? It's a small percentage for you, but is it a high growth market? Exports is not a big market for us and that's a very thoughtful strategy. Bearing customers want bearing factories to be as close to them as possible. It's not very efficient to ship bearings from India to Europe or the other way around, unless there are scale issues. So especially on automotive, we need to have bearing factories very close to customers because the scale is there. A channel behind me or a line behind me can spit out 10 million bearings a year very easily. On industrial, because the demand is lower, the batch sizes are smaller, we don't need 10 million bearings a year. It might be 5,000 bearings or 50,000 bearings. So there we may look at exports, but more in terms of consolidation of regional demand. Okay. So we can do a factory in India that will supply to India and Southeast Asia. But that's purely a question of scale. If India's scale becomes that large, it will also be more local than exports. So what is this localization strategy? Earlier you said that you want to increase it by increasing your capex here. What is the localization percentage? And how are you ensuring higher capex to ensure higher percentage here? So Sonar, contrary to popular opinion, localization is more than what we make locally in India. It's also localization of supply chain. You know, steel is a big part of what we use. We got to have localized steel suppliers. We have to have localized component suppliers. So when we talk localization is more than just capex within SKF, it's how do we support our entire supply chain to become more local. So uh, what are the localization percentage right now in the automotive and industrial segment? For automotive, uh, it's about uh, almost close to 90%. Oh, okay. Very high. Yeah. For reasons I spoke of earlier. On industrial, much lower, about 35-40%. So the next phase that everyone's talking about is this big electric vehicle boom that's coming through, right? Uh, but are less bearings used in electric vehicles? So how can you make this an opportunity? Will it be higher margin or higher volume business? Yes, you're right. There are marginally less bearings used in electric, electric vehicles. But the kind of bearings changes. They are much more high speed, low noise, much higher quality, better insulation. The kind of bearings change. And they are frankly a higher price bearing sometimes. So we don't really expect our revenue to decline, okay. even though the number of bearings may go down hmm. um, in a few cases. So how much is EV as a percentage of your overall pie? It's very small right now, but that's a function of the EV market yes. in India. Um, and it's only a question of when and not if. The EV market is exploding every day. Okay. Two wheelers for sure, four wheelers to follow. And uh, so as and when that EV market explodes, we are ready. <laughs> okay, so you're ready for whatever demand comes in from the EV we market. Are ready. We are ready on our supply side, we are ready on technology side, we are, and on talent side, we are ready. Okay, so uh, uh, talking more about the EV space, how much higher would the margin be here if there is a ballpark number? And what is it as a percentage of revenues right now? So you must have done a Dipstick survey as well, right? Most of the companies are that EV market will grow by this much. If that happens, how much will you see EV contribution going up for you? So EV market, again, industry numbers uh, talk about, depending on the segment, about 15 to 20% growth rates over the next few years. Maybe a little more in two wheelers, a little less in commercial vehicles. If we go by those estimates, we expect our share to also grow in the same range. But I would maybe hazard a guess, we will grow faster than that. So 20% market share is you is what you said you have. Um, can you tell us uh, what are That's the plans? Overall. overall, of course. Uh, what's the plan to grow that? What is the market share that you're aiming, say, five years down the line? And what are you doing for that? I think uh, it's tough to pin a number to it, of course. Sir. But certainly we want to grow higher than the market. Hmm. If the market's growing at 10%, we want to grow at 15%. <laughs> if the market's growing at 20%, we want to grow higher. What that share will look like in the future, we don't know. 
uh, but I would hazard a guess in the mid 20s. The other segment that I wanted to speak to you about is the aftermarket opportunity. That is where 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 you have introduced a lot of products. So. Uh, what is the opportunity here for you, the size, and are you looking at more product uh, initiation or uh, you know introduction in this segment? What's the percentage here right now? The aftermarket has different dynamics if it's automotive or industrial. Automotive is a function of reach. So how quickly, how efficiently can you have our bearings reach the mechanics where customers walk into? Mm -hmm. On the industrial side, it's reach of course, it's also about efficiency. It's also about quality. It's uh, it's a lot to do with performance. So the dynamics are a little different in both the segments, but both are extremely important parts of our business. And you're right, we have to grow both. Okay, so how much has it grown uh, by so far? Is it a big market for you in terms of percentage? It's about uh, half the business um, in both industrial mm -hmm. and automotive, half the businesses aftermarket. So how will you ensure that a person knows that this is SKF and this is not a counterfeit? How do you ensure that? Yeah, so we have uh, we have QR codes on packaging, QR codes on products. Customers are being educated all the time. They can scan the code and they can very quickly figure out if this is genuine SKF or not. Even then, if they're unsure, they can call us okay. and we'll send someone to their factory and test it for them and tell them. Okay. Because customers always want to use genuine products. I'm sure, why not, right? So, when you're talking about growth, earlier you had mentioned that CapEx is something that you're planning to increase as well, say by 35 to 40 percent. Where will it be used? How are you planning to fund it as well? Well, we are a cash positive company to say it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, it's all funded from internal accruals. Uh, our capex typically is about 150 odd crores a year. I think it might go up in the coming years because we're localizing more and more. The channel you stand in right now is only a few months old. So okay. it looks pretty brand new, right? It does. <laughs> right. And I think we want to have more such localizations in play across all our factories in India. Okay. So when you talk about localization, does it come with a cost benefit as well? It would be, right? So. Have you been able to quantify that? Apart from the fact that you want to localize and support the local community as well, there must be a financial benefit to that as well. Uh, has been has there been any calculation, so to say, how much will margins increase by because of that? Well, a uh, couple of things. One is, of course, when you localize, you do not spend your cash on importing goods in transit, warehousing, etc. So that working capital gets freed up. Yeah. But also, you're also able to get a higher price from customers because customers like localization. Customers don't want disruptions in the supply chain. Mm. So, of course, the chip shortage that we saw, the shortage in terms of supply chain has made a shift in terms of uh, supply chain as well. Is that not a problem anymore with respect to supply chains across the industry and for you? No, it's still a problem. The supply chain disruptions are here to stay. You know, we've spent too much time in globalizing supply chains. That's going away now. We're getting into more near shoring, more localization. So that's a structural shift that will stay for a long, long time to come. So you spoke about working capital, how that gets freed up a little if you localize more. How does the working capital really work here? You have seen a uh, decrease in your working capital days, inventory days, receivable days. Is all that in place? Will you see a further decline from the current levels? 109 days is what your receivable well, days are right now. Um, again, the more we localize, frankly, the more cash we free up because we're not stocking up our cash on goods in transit, on warehousing, on inventory, etc. We can actually make bearings today and supply tomorrow to our customers versus importing them three months in advance. Mm -hmm. So the more we localize, the better it is for working capital, of course. Okay. Uh, so how much of an improvement are you looking at if there are any projections made in working capital and is the are the collections or the receivables in place like there is no issue with that respect to industry receivables frankly has never been a problem for us hmm. we are uh, we are performing really well on, the, on that metric hmm. for a number of years to come so i don't worry too much about that on the inventory side absolutely we expect to cut our inventory costs by about 20 30 percent um, if you're able to localize well. Oh, okay. 25-30% is a big number on there. On inventory. Yes, on inventory, of course. 
Um, you know, the next thing that I wanted to check with you and ask you about is that how does it work? Is the rotating equipment performance or REP 5 to 7 percent? But the idea is that it could be a big opportunity, high margin uh, segment for you. How does it work and how will you scale it up? How much, by how much will you scale it up? If you allow me to give you a story. Yes. And a customer wakes up in the morning, they think, how can I buy less bearings today? When our sales guy wake up in the morning, they think about how can we sell more bearings today? So there's an inherent conflict between the customers and us. What RAP does is manage that conflict and align both the customer and us on the same page. And therefore, we should stop talking about buying less bearings or selling more bearings. How can we align our services to their performance? So let's talk about, can we guarantee you a certain uptime? Can we reduce your MTBF? Doesn't matter what bearings you buy. And that's RAP. It's equipment performance. Okay. We think in the next three or four years, it could be double digit for our business. And okay. of course, with much higher margins. So Mr. Bhatnagar, we have spoken about whole host of issues, whole host of opportunities for the company and what they are really doing here. What does it mean in terms of growth for you, say for the next five to six years? It's not a short term thing that we do on this show as well. 18 to 20 percent has been the growth rate in the last 10 years. What are you planning in terms of revenues for the next 10 years or 5 years? I think at the very minimum, we want to keep those growth rates alive. But more importantly, we want to grow faster than the market. And not just incrementally faster, but much more mm -hmm. faster. And that's how you gain share. So really, our, uh, our aim is to get to as high a share as possible. In terms of dividend, one thing that the investors like about the company is that you continuously pay dividend and you've been doing that at higher rates. Will that increase going forward or will you look at some other strategy to pay out the shareholders? Well, uh, we will keep our cash in the company has never been a problem. It's only a question of what do we do with the cash and the multiple options you mentioned, of course, paying a dividend, investing more or doing both. And ideally, we want to reward our investors, of course, and we also want to grow the company. Mm. But uh, everything will happen from internal approvals. Dividends uh, will be at the same pace as has been in the past. No change in that. Okay. Investments, we think, will become more. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhatnagar. It was a pleasure speaking Likewise. with you and being here as well uh, to understand more about SKF India as well. Thank you so much for tuning into CNBC TV 18. All right, that was a deep dive in SKF. But time to slip into a short break. We'll come back with another interesting stock. Vesuvius India is the stock on our Swatlight segment. Don't go anywhere.